Hello, everyone. I'm Cassandra Clark, and I am so excited to be part of the Austin Studio Tour, albeit virtually this year. What I'm covering today, a little bit about me as an artist, a behind-the-scenes look at my studio, my process. I have a lot of different time-lapse videos that are hopefully interesting to you to give a behind-the-scenes look at how I work, my styles, hopefully give you some inspiration if you're an artist or yourself, or just to learn a little bit more behind the scenes. I also want to cover the topics, motifs, scenes that inspire me, a little bit of personal stories of how I work, how my commissions go, what type of topics and themes I gravitate towards. And then at the end, if you can stick around, I also am doing a giveaway for the Austin Studio Tour. For those who have never heard of it, this is an amazing program that Big Medium brings every year. There's an East Austin Studio Tour, a West Austin Studio Tour, and this year they are combined virtually as a way to unify artists art enthusiasts, collectors, all around this amazing art community that is thriving here in Austin. It is starting November 14th, goes until the 22nd. I'm recording this video so you can access this on demand at your convenience, but I'll also be posting a lot more videos on my YouTube channel, my Instagram, my Facebook. So please stay tuned to learn a lot more. Without further ado, I'll jump right in. First of all, I'm missing all of you. This is a very quick preview of what the East Austin Studio Tour looked like for me last year. I was lucky enough to partner and create a group coalition. We, we called ourselves Artist Hive Mind. There were 20 of us together that band together to create this amazing outdoor interactive experience. Here's a couple of pictures of my booth, some of the things that I show, shared. A lot of community members coming out to see the work, to discuss things, to learn from each other. We had a lot of fun and I'm missing all of you both that were part of the tour and visited last year and can't wait to do that again in person. In the interim, so that we can all stay safe, I am bringing you this virtual recording of a behind the scenes and some of the topics and questions I've been asked in the past that hopefully will try to create the same kind of dialogue otherwise. So a little bit about me. Most of my work is predominantly sunsets, landscapes, oceanic themes. I'm really moved by that. I really enjoy painting predominantly with acrylic and oil. A lot of my work that you've seen historically will play with a lot of really vibrant, bold colors and gorgeous sunsets that I just, this is like my favorite thing on the planet. I've also do a lot of oceanic work. I'm an avid scuba diver, ocean enthusiast, and 10% of all of my oceanic art themed sales, I donate to the Ocean Cleanup Project, who is doing a massive initiative to help clean up our oceans, which hopefully you are already aware, are very filled with plastic right now. Mostly humans are destroying everything from bleaching corals to the creatures that are eating plastics instead of jellyfish, getting stuck in our waste. It's a real, real massive problem. If you haven't educated yourself on this, please do so. This group is amazing and something I'm very passionate about. So beyond just loving the beauty of the underwater world, loving to swim with these gorgeous creatures, explore them in their natural habitat. That alone is inspiration enough for me to really want to recreate some of these beautiful moments that I capture underwater. But also I really hope a lot of my paintings are a rallying cry for. If you aren't familiar with what's beneath the sea, many have never explored or didn't have a desire to, there's an amazing planet below us and we really need to do a better job of taking care of it. So a lot of my work is a call for that action. I also dabble in a lot of abstract, both 3D, 2D, and some, um, you know, really whatever <laughs> I'm feeling like that day. A lot of my abstract stuff is really just about the process. I really just want to create and free flow. It's my venting mechanism. It's my passion. So a lot of my abstract stuff, I have no idea what it's going to look like until I actually do it. I've also been dabbling in some other mediums. Printmaking, for one, Austin has an amazing printmaking community, so I've gotten a lot of inspiration from that, gotten to know a lot of people within that, that group and taken some amazing classes, joined Big Medium for the Print Expo in 2020, all really fun ways to connect and learn more about traditional printmaking. I also do some beadwork. This right here is a turtle painted with one-by-one one tiny seed beads. You have some videos of that on my Instagram. I also have pictures and processes. I've done a lot of those, both frame pictures, fabrics, textiles. I've been dabbling with some of that. And pre-COVID times, when we could definitely be in person, I also would teach some painting courses. Uh, first time doing them virtually, but I'm definitely going to try and do some more, both for my channel and for anyone that's curious to learn a little bit more, lean into art, might be intimidated. That's some of the things that I hope to bring with my YouTube channel as well. 
So I want to give you a behind the scenes look, what it actually looks like in my studio, which is 99% of the time, total chaos. It was formerly known as what some of you have dubbed a living room. Some of you might have dining rooms. Mine have both been converted. <laughs> my apartment slash studio is constantly a mess. It's covered in multiple works that I always have going at any given time. This right here is a time lapse that I wanted to show you of a commissioned uh, acrylic painting that I did. So I had the video set up to capture the initial stages. This is a 30 by 40 canvas. I'm using acrylic paints, multiple brushes. You can see that it moves a little bit only because what's holding up the camera starts shifting. So apologies for that. You can see more of the pandemonium. That is my studio space. But you can see a little bit of how I work with this. Um, a lot of times people start light and go into dark when they're working on a, a landscape painting. In this case, I actually kind of went top down because I was so eager to capture these really, really vibrant colors that I wanted to bring in. I carried that color all throughout to make this warm overall glow in the painting. A lot of warm yellows, oranges, some magentas, pinks. I wanted to carry that through the, the entire canvas and as many of you that work with acrylic know, it's all about layering. So adding a lot more layers, adding in some of the dark shadows, some of the details, did it through multiple steps. And what was cool about this one, uh, we ended up naming it Walk With Me. This was commissioned from a collector in Kansas City who sent me this picture. This was the inspiration for it. And he said, look, this is our family's beach house in Florida. This was done very late last December. So I'm catching you up on a few things I've done since the last studio tour. It's kind of a last minute ask. He said, I am looking for a Christmas gift for my wife. I want something really personal and beautiful. And this home was their Florida place that just reminded them of happy times. That looking at the picture, it just seemed so welcoming. So I was really excited to do this one. You're just looking at that. I am so eager to walk down those steps and be part of this beach and watch this amazing sunset. And luckily he gave me a lot of creative freedom to run with colors. So I really went bold with it. This was the final output. We called it Walk With Me. Vibrant, hot sunset. Like I mentioned earlier, I had a lot of those warm colors carry on throughout. You get the purples, pinks, yellows, magentas all throughout the painting, and then a silhouetted balcony. So not exactly like the picture, but definitely inspired from it. And my favorite part of this, he was so gracious. He sent me pictures of it in his final home, which as an artist makes me so happy to see my work in its final loving place where it's appreciated by him and his family in Kansas. So I'm very grateful for that opportunity. That was a recent one that I had done right after last year's uh, East Austin studio tour. One thing that was really fun for me to do as part of the print expo that I mentioned, when I'm dabbling in printmaking, I went with that same oceanic theme. And I wanted to show you a little bit about what that process looks like. So started off by default, I love octopuses. And yes, they're octopuses, they're not octopi. I've had this debate before and had to learn the hard way. Um, I'm a huge fan of octopuses and decided to recreate somewhat of an abstract scene featuring one predominantly, but then a bunch of tentacles coming at from all the sides. So here on the left, you can see me sketching it out first with a pencil and then using a permanent marker. This is on a wood panel that we use that, um, I think the whole thing was like 30 by 40. It was a pretty big panel. And so the first step was to draw it out. And the second step for anybody who's done relief printmaking more than me, this would be very obvious, is carve, 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 carve. Um, I took a class with the Contemporary Austin to first dabble into printmaking, started much smaller, and then did this print expo course through Big Medium. And the one thing that I learned consistently was um, kind of half joking, but half serious. The, the instructor said that you draw the picture and then you are done with your creativity. The rest is robotic. I would say it's a little less robotic than that, but it does feel very mechanical when you're just going through and carving out the pieces, especially something this large. This took over 70 hours to carve in total. So this was definitely a hefty process. A few videos here, as you saw, I drew it out, started carving the main piece, and just when you feel like you're done, of course there's more to carve. So you can see me carving in some of the details here obviously removing the negative and leaving what I put as black marker to help indicate what will be the positive, what will actually rub off on the paper and create that imprint. This is my first time doing something this large scale. And to be honest, it was very daunting. I had no idea how it was gonna turn out. I was so nervous to make a mistake, but it was actually really fun to just kind of play with it, see where it went, 
if I nicked something, I would just improvise. I told myself this didn't have to be perfect. It was, one, it was just one of my first times. And it actually was really fun to do. The best part about all this, because it was so large scale, we didn't just use a printing press. So taking you out of the studio for a sec and showing you what it actually ended up looking like, this was really cool. If you guys haven't been part of these events in the past, I can't wait for them to come back in person. But Print Expo 2020 was an amazing opportunity, not only to learn how to do this craft, but we got to print these with an actual steamroller. So this is what it actually looked like. I'm gonna play a few of these videos at once. You can see, I'll turn this down just because it gets crazy. This is us inking it up. We had a whole band of support, a huge community rally around it. You can see them after they just inked the wood block itself, bringing it over to the path of the steamroller. And you can see them pulling on the left another print that they had just steamrolled and how massive these pieces of paper were. These are larger than most people, as you can see from them carrying them. Once it was actually laid out, we put several layers on it. And then the fun part came putting the paper down on top of this. So you can see my print block there in the middle. It's all inked up, ready to go face up. Here's the massive paper that we use to cover it up. We have multiple layers that go on on top of it. This was really tricky to get precise, especially because of the weight of the steamroller and how heavy it was and the fact that it was shaking a little bit. We knew it wasn't gonna be a perfect print, but at least we were hoping to get some kind of impression of this wood block successfully enough that it could be an interesting print. You can see them layering on a felt cover. We put on this clear thing. And then you can see this massive steamroller, no joke, about to run over my art. This made me very nervous because my thoughts were, I'm like, is it gonna damage the wood block? I spent like 70, 80 hours working on this piece. This made me very nervous, but these guys are pros. They do this every year. They made it really fun. You have a whole community of people that looked around to see it. And then the awesome part is after all of this was the grand reveal. So we looped it back. I was very nervous, but there it is. It came up no problem. And it was such a unique experience, not just carving this wood block, but then getting to steamroll it. I didn't personally drive the steamroller, but got to witness the whole thing. And it turned out really cool. So this was a really fun thing to do in the studio. And this was January in 2020. I titled the piece Ink for, you know, obviously a play on the fact that it was done with oil-based ink, but clearly that's what Octop Octopuses uh, shoot out if they're scared or what they're famous for is the octopus in squid ink. So that's what I titled the piece. And it was 24 by 30. That's the final wood block. You saw the pictures on the right of how the actual process went. I thought that was really cool and fun thing to share if you haven't seen that process before. This is what it looked like after 70 hours of carving. And here's the final print. Obviously it's reversed. It was really cool. I was able to steamroll print two of them. And then later back in my, my home studio was able to hand pull a couple prints. I actually tried it on synthetic Yupo paper as well. So I had the ink on alcohol, um, alcohol ink based. What, what, that's usually what I use it for, the Yupo paper. And I hand printed that with a Baron and a Brayer as well, which took a really long time. I only made three of those, but they made for really cool collector's prints. Next one I want to show with, share with you is my alcohol inks process. So I actually fell in love with alcohol ink at a East Austin studio tour, I want to say 2018, where um, an artist was showing a demo of what this medium was, what it was capable of. It's essentially ink, but an alcohol base. And once I learned how it can move and flow, kind of like an acrylic paint, but way more fluid, and you could do so many fun things with this. You can blow on it, you can shift it, you can move the panel or the medium that it's on. You can light it on fire, obviously not on paper, but if it's on glass, because all the ink and the alcohol burns off and the ink can stay there. So this past year, especially with so much time at home and in quarantine, I've been doing a lot of alcohol ink paintings, especially large scale. So you can see in the video on the left, I'm sp using spray bottles, hair dryers, straws I'm blowing on it I'm using my fingers and getting all messy <laughs> you can see this is layer one and I'll explain a little bit more about what this commission piece is about in a moment but I'm you can see me using straws I've got alcohol ink bottles um, just bottles of rubbing alcohol the spray I'm using a hair dryer a lot that's fun for me uh, there's probably more official tools but I like to be scrappy 
Um, you see a lot of me just using my fingers and hands, rubbing it around. I'm using a gas mask, which is really, really important. I know they're kind of hard to come by today, but if you're working with alcohol ink, I strongly recommend you protect yourself against these fumes. They can be nauseating. Um, I always have a fan going. I have windows open when I'm doing this. My whole place stinks while I do this project, but it's totally worth it because of how much fun it is. You can see that was part two, adding a little bit more details. And then as these color layers come in, you can see me adding some really bold colors. If you haven't, if you can't tell already, this is somewhat of a galaxy space scene, semi-abstract, and any space enthusiast will know that the center of a massive galaxy, it burns red hot, quite literally. So these are the red gaseous elements that I'm adding into the galaxy. It's a very large composition. You can see me moving back and forth quite a bit. This was really, really fun to do, and I'm excited for how much creative liberty I got for it. And the most fun part of this, besides obviously the process, because it looks like I'm just playing here. Quite honestly, I am. I'm splattering things, I'm throwing paint. I'm just letting it flow until I feel happy about it. The coolest part of this was the request I got for, from the um, collector. But he's, he's from Chicago and <laughs> asked me to do this piece. And here's how he positioned it to me. I want a badass painting that matches my gaming system. He had like a glowing Xbox thing, clearly not well versed in the world of gaming but it was a glowing gaming system he's like i want something that captures that ethos and since i'm not leaving home i'm going to spend all day looking at that and playing with my my xbox but i also want something that's colorful to look at because i'll be stuck indoors all day and he's because this was around june where many of us have been in lockdown for a few months we were starting to go stir crazy if not already totally insane with being inside all the time we wanted to create something that was kind of a reflection on the world and the planet as we saw it. He, his words were, I want something that speaks to our impending doom as a planet right now, because let's be honest, not many of us have been feeling optimistic, whether it's all the COVID impact, especially artists feel as with so many professions, so many people out of work or having their worlds completely disrupted. I thought this was a perfect piece to do in 2020. Here was the final output of what it looked like. It's hard to capture on just video, obviously, because it's kind of flat here, but tons of color. All of those gray elements are actually shimmering silver. So this piece, when it moves in the light, is super reflective. There's thousands of stars. I wanted to capture both the microcosms of little white stars in, in space, as well as bold, colorful things. You see a massive galaxy. And why it's called impending doom, besides the obvious you know, societal implications of 2020, as I mentioned, I also have a massive black hole here, which my space friend uh, slash nerd that commissioned this piece made sure to point out that if a black hole was actually this large in comparison to the size of this galaxy, as though if this piece was to scale, nothing would exist at all. We'd all be sucked into this black hole and absolutely everything would fail to exist. Kind of feels like that on some days in 2020. So I thought that was pretty fitting and I was really happy to do this piece. So that's a little bit behind the scenes of uh, my alcohol inks process. And it ended up being, like I said, pretty large. So that's what it looked like to scale with the couches as well. One other commission piece that I wanted to share that goes into more of a traditional style landscape was a commission piece I did for a family out of New Jersey that wanted to capture their beach house. They had a beach house in Delaware, which became their sanctuary because it was such a remote place. It was where they could escape to when all of us were sitting at home and they love the peace and tranquility of it. So they gave me a photo to base off. They gave me several videos of here's the ethos of the place, showing me, you know, I could hear the seagulls, I could hear the breeze, I could see the waves, I could see the grass moving, and how just still and quiet it felt. It felt like a very just simple, beautiful East Coast beach house. And so I used some muted colors, some pastels, played with a lot of soft lines. I wanted to capture that like, ah, relaxing feeling. So in a contrast to the very stark, bold, in-your-face colors I did with the alcohol inks painting, this one is much more of a softer sag. And so you can see a few videos here of the process. First one of me just painting in the details. This is oil on cold-pressed Reeves paper. Once I get some of the details, you can, or once I get the, the baseline, you can see me starting to add in this pathway. They had this walkway that led to the beach. I started painting in some of the details of their neighbor's house. All of this is from the view of their balcony because that was kind of their, that was their happy place. They'd sit on this balcony and watch this beautiful ocean scene. 
they also said that they sometimes see dolphins and it'd be really cool if I could paint those in. And so I did add some like Easter eggs within this painting, a couple being that there's some dolphins, not really to scale, but definitely wanted you to see them. You'll see that in the background. And then at the very bottom, I actually added in the address within the grass of their beach house. So there was no doubt that it was there. And kind of a cool story about this, when I posted this video on Instagram, a little bit about the process, someone who I'd never met before, had no connection with, happened to look at the location because he was also based, I guess, in Dewey Beach, Delaware, saw this video, messaged me and said, hey, is it this, this apartment or is this, this house, beach house? I think I'm your neighbor. I'm like, well, this isn't me living here. This is me vicariously living through this. But I reached out to the original, the person who uh, commissioned me for this and said, hey, do you by chance know this person? They reached out to me on Instagram. Turns out they were next door neighbors. It was really funny. So my art, and they never met each other before. Um, so my art essentially unified them. They got to meet a new neighbor and they were really, really happy with this painting. It captured overall this ah, feeling of their beach house. And it was really fun to do. Took a lot of sessions. You can see I'm adding a lot of details here on the right. Final layers, I added in some clouds, added to the dolphins, sharpened the grass a little bit, sharpened the fence post. And here's what the final output ended up looking like. 16 by 20 oil on cold press Reeves paper. I again, used a lot of soft colors, blues and greens. And this is my favorite part. And this is something I absolutely love some of my collectors for. They don't just take the painting and say, thank you. So many of them either send me pictures like you saw earlier of the actual art in its final place. And this as well really warmed my heart. She was commissioning it not for herself, but as a gift for her father who had this house and would always bring the family together there. And so he is in the house now opening in this painting. And I just thought it was precious. The grandkids were clearly enthused. <laughs> this warmed my heart. Anyone who's an artist who's had their work commissioned as a gift knows how much of an honor that is, but how much more pressure might come with that, knowing that oof, the bar is really high. This is something that's meant to be really special. And I was so relieved that he appreciated this. And it feels kind of meta having him open this with the same view that I had painted. I got to know that place pretty intimately. Obviously, I've never been there, but just be by given this opportunity to dive into this painting. So that was a really cool thing that I got to do this summer while in quarantine, spending quite a bit of time painting. Now, one other thing that I wanted to bring up as I'm giving you a behind the scenes tour is not just what I've been up to this year and one, how chaotic my studio is. So I did mention like, this is my home slash chaos. Um, wanted to give you a sneak peek of what this actually looks like on a daily basis. It might look insane to some, to many artists, this just looks like another day. I don't think there's been a time that I can remember where I only had one work, one painting going. Um, as you can see on this bottom left, I was really in the mood for an oceanic spree and I did five oceanic paintings at once. So I had all of those going. In the background, you can see that massive wood block that I was doing, ink, which I had in the background sitting there. On the right, you can see I had this massive alcohol ink thing going. On another easel, I had this Alaskan landscape going. Obviously, many of us haven't been able to travel anywhere. I had plans to go to Alaska in June. That was clearly not gonna happen. And so instead, I painted this scene of, of an Alaskan landscape as to my way of trying to vicariously be there. So some of this is back to the ocean themes that I really care about, travel things, just self-expression. So a lot of different mediums here. But then also some of my work, I feel is, is as like my duty as an artist is to capture what's happening with the time. So 2020 has been insane. One piece that was a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I feel like it was a really important story to be told. I titled this Red, White, Black, and Blue. And it was a testament to the BLM protests and all of the social unrest that happened this summer and frankly has been happening for hundreds of years. I think this is a very big awakening for a lot of us. I, of course, as a white female, will never really truly understand what this is like for so many people of color every day going through all of the oppression and all of the, the hard times that they have to deal with just to exist. I'll never understand it, but I respect you and I support you. And so I really wanted a piece that captured 
how important I think this awakening in our country is, how many more people were finally trying to get out of their comfort zones, have awkward conversations that we might have previously avoid, avoided. I think it was so much more important to self-educate, to lean in for many of us who don't ha haven't read as many stories or haven't heard how the statistics are really lean into it. I think this is a really amazing opportunity for our country to just get more woke, <laughs> to be honest, to really hear these stories. And so I took it upon myself to do a lot of these allyship challenges, do a lot more reading, a lot more listening, a lot more understanding, and just trying to understand through an empathetic lens how I can do more in support. So this piece that I created, I really tried to play with the American flag while featuring the lives of so many, there's obviously hundreds, thousands of people that were unjustifiably killed way before their times because of pl police brutality and issues that could have been avoided, people that still should be alive today. And what I thought was so compelling to me about the story is I was really disgusted how people assumed that the protests were like un-American, that you know these people were just rambunctious and had all these horrible characterizations in the media. But we're talking about Americans and Americans' lives that were lost. And so I really thought that that kind of contrast, I played it into the American flag and using our flag's colors. And really at the core of Black Lives Matter, showing that this is the statement, this is the centerpiece, not only to showcase their faces, but to give a stark reflection of like, this is our country's makeup right now. And this is what defined us as a nation for many people, both day in, day out, watching on the news here, watching abroad. We are so far from past this. We need to keep these conversations going. And I really hope that artists, as artists, we can capture what is so important to the times and keep telling these important stories. These names need to be remembered. These stories need to be told. No matter who you are, what background you are, you can either tell these stories or be part of the problem. So that's what I tried to capture here. What was really cool is that I'm far from alone in doing this. I actually had the honor to be part of this New York City exhibit called Under the Mask, a metamorphosis. It was really a reflection on the chaos that is 2020. So a lot of people came together, hundreds of artists were everything from coronavirus being affected to their jobs, to social unrest, to the protest. It was a collection and a virtual one of the trying times. I think this summer, a lot of us really felt this intensity. And so my work was featured there. And I think it was worth bringing up because obviously we're doing this virtually because of all the things that happened in 2020. So I'd be remiss to not reflect on one of the key moments that was very important to a lot of people, myself included. And I really hope we keep that conversation going. Last thing I wanted to show, I've been back to the oceanic thing. I, I was talking about things that are very important to me. I mentioned in the beginning that a lot of that is climate change and ocean advocacy, cleaning up our oceans, taking care of what is 70% of our planet and this is the only one we have. So behind the scenes, this is how I sketch out some of my pieces. These are actually based off pictures that I took while scuba diving in Bonaire, which is part of the Dutch Netherlands and the Southern Caribbean, very close to like Aruba's part of that and Curacao, um, close to Venezuela, if, you, if, you've, if you're trying to orient where that is. It's a beautiful, beautiful place and one of the very few places that it ha hasn't been untouched by climate change, but luckily it still has stunning coral and amazing reefs and it is a beautiful sanctuary to just see these gorgeous creatures in their natural form. And so I took a lot of pictures of, in this case, blue angelfish, gorgeous sea turtles, and I tried to capture them in their natural environment. And to be honest, I played up the color a little bit here, particularly with the cor coral and some of the, the plants, because a lot of them are being bleached out. So once again, I talked about it in the beginning, but a lot of our reefs aren't what they used to be, and we really need to do a better job or there'll be nothing left to explore. So I did a series of collections this year. Again, I had a lot of time at home painting um, in my studio this 2020. And so this is the before and after. Um, these ones, these are a little bit larger. This one's 16 by 20. I titled this piece on the left, Hey Humans. I wanted to play on just like a wake up call to really do a better job um, as people, whether it's as simple as recycling and choosing reusable bags and declining uh, plastic straws, like really little things you can do that create a massive difference. 
I called it Hey Humans because this turtle is kind of confronting you. And this is based off a picture of a turtle that was relaxing. And when we slowly swam up while we were scuba diving, he kind of really got in our face, which was amazing to see. Obviously, we got out of his way. But to me, it kind of felt like a wake-up call. Like I have him almost pointing to the coral as though he's like, guys, this is my world. Stop messing it up. So that was kind of the inspiration behind this piece. Obviously, there's a massive blue abyss. And on the bottom left of the painting, you see that it's kind of sand and kind of depleted. I wanted this to be somewhat of a gradual transition. It's not perfectly to scale, obviously, because this is underwater and I didn't want to mask this out overall. So it's not as realistic as the turtle is because I really want the turtle to be the emphasis. Him yelling at you to wake up and think about what you've been doing as a human and your role in this planet. But I also want to show how this can gradually change. And if we don't do anything, there's not going to be a reef left. The last one I have on the right, I did this one at the same time as all these others, kind of bouncing between paintings, using oil on canvas, layering between layers of each of them. And this is me when I was swimming with Bora Bora, in Bora Bora a few years ago, um, swimming with black tip sharks, which was really, really cool. They have such a bad reputation, but sharks are awesome. They are such beautiful creatures. And I was so lucky, just, I just floated a lot amongst them. No harm, no foul. They're just big fish and I think they're beautiful. So this was really fun for me. Okay, if you've made it this far, thank you. You've heard a little bit about me, what my studio's like, you've seen videos of my process, you've heard about some of the things I care about. And because of the Austin Studio Tour 2020, I'm also doing a giveaway. So to keep me entertained, I've been doing a lot of these smaller motifs. I'm playing with watercolors, which is not my area of expertise, but something I'm having a lot of fun with and doing some more small scale pieces. So I am giving away several of these original watercolor painting post postcards. Here's a couple, for example, they're pretty small. They're actual postcards. And so I'm giving away up to 10 of these. I'm literally going to write your name in here. If you win, ship this to you. And then it's going to come in this clear plastic envelope. All I have to do is put a stamp on it. And then you'll have this original watercolor. Um, some of them are ink drawings, some of them are filled in. There's, there's a few of them pictured here, but I'm working on a lot of others. All you have to do if you want to enter this contest is no cost to you at all. Um, please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can do all three if you're feeling generous or pick one of them. I will be sure to include links both in this video and on the next screen. I'll go through what those links are. And then send me a message. I want to connect with all of you. Obviously, I miss the in-person interaction. Many of these conversations we could have had face-to-face, -face, so I wish I could see you all in person. I can't wait to do so again soon. But send me a DM about this video. This was my studio tour. You got to see behind the scenes, hear a little bit about me, what I care about, how I work. What did you like? What didn't you like? What would you like to see more of? What inspired you, influenced you, anything? Let's start a conversation. I really would love to connect with you all. The studio tour, as we mentioned, goes November 14th, November 22nd, 2020. So on the end of the tour, November 22nd at 1159 p.m. Central Time, the contest will be over, so there won't be any more entries. But if you can send me a message, follow me on one of these channels and just say, hey, say hello. It doesn't have to be anything special. Let me know what you thought of this video, anything that you'd like to share. I really want to hear from you. That will be qualified as your entry. I'm going to take all of the entries in a spreadsheet randomly select 10 winners or as many postcards as I have. Um, I've got a lot of them in the works right now, but there'll be many more coming as well. This is definitely my, my, my vice, if nothing else. And I will be sending these to you all and mailing them as a giveaway. So thank you for tuning into this. Um, here are some of the links of how we can connect. On the left is one of my most recent pieces. I finished this one just about a month ago. Sunny waves is what I call it. This is a, for many of us that can't travel and are daydreaming of a beach, Here's some crashing waves on a sunlit beach that hopefully we can all visit again soon. My website is www.cassandraclarkart.com. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Cassandra Clark Art. My YouTube channel is here. Again, I will link that within here. I also have an Etsy shop that's featuring a lot of my original artistic gifts. I have things, uh, my own clothing line that are launched with a lot of these. So just in time for the holidays, I have leggings and hoodies and mugs and original prints and glique prints and a lot of really great gifts, particularly for an art lover, an ocean lover, or anybody just really is feeling color, some of my designs. 
please check that out and support my shop. Those will be direct shipped to you. I'm also on Pinterest and Twitter. You can see Cassandra Clark Art and Cass Clark Art. I tweet some of the um, day-to-day happenings, talk about the studio tour. I'll be tweeting and Instagramming quite a bit about this tour. And I really want to hear from you all. So thank you for the time. Thank you for listening to my studio tour. I hope this inspired you. I would love to hear from you. And I can't wait to see you all next time. Hopefully next time in person. Take care, everyone.